I want to show you one of my favorite websites when it comes to Bitcoin macro cycle analysis and that's lookintobitcoin.com. I will put the link in the video description as well. The nice thing about this website is it presents a bunch of charts trying to identify where we currently are in the Bitcoin macro cycle and it presents all kinds of different approaches. For example, it looks at the stock to flow model, at the pi cycle top indicator, at logarithmic regression. We've also got a bunch of on-chain analyses, for example, market value to realized value, relative unrealized profit to loss. And last but not least, we also see the number of Bitcoin wallets with a specific Bitcoin holding threshold. So I want to show you a few of those charts, the ones that I find most interesting. So by the end of this video, you should have different perspectives of how you can look at the data and how different people might be behaving in certain conditions. And so in the end, no model is perfect, right? So there are different approaches to come up with, are we oversold, are we undersold? Some approaches try to model the price long-term, but none of those models are perfect, right? In the end, the only thing that's perfect is a price determined by a buyer and a seller. And that's in the end what's written in the price data. But it's good to have a look at those models because I do think they give a certain range and at least when times are going into the extremes and when we rise very quickly or when we fall very quickly or when we fall beyond a certain historical threshold, those models can help us identify those times and then act accordingly and actually notice this time is special, it might make sense to act on this. So I hope you know this model. It's the stock to flow model. It's one of the most popular price prediction models for Bitcoin. And the way the model works is it looks at different commodities, say gold and silver, and it tries to find out what is the annual new supply that hits the market. And based on how high or how low the supply is, it comes up with a ideal market cap or a modeled market cap for that commodity. So say since gold gets produced less per year than silver, so it's more rare than silver, gold thus has a higher market cap. And so you can make a regression analysis of how much new supply hits the market versus what's the market cap of the commodity. And then you can extrapolate and build something similar for Bitcoin. And that's what happens here. What you can see in the chart is that the price approximately 10 X's every four years. And the reason for this 10 X movement, this step movement over here is that Bitcoin's new supply halves every four year. So the new supply of Bitcoin that gets produced by the miners is algorithmically cut in half every four years. And thus Bitcoin becomes more rare over time. And thus the price is modeled to increase with those halvening events. Now the good thing about this model is that it predicted the prices relatively well. The bad thing about the model, I think, is that it can't work until infinity because Bitcoin's halvenings, they will happen far beyond the year 2100 every four years. And if we got a step function of 10x every four years, we would have a final market cap of Bitcoin that is way beyond all other assets combined. So the model has to break at some point. And the model obviously breaks when there's not enough demand anymore because this model only looks at the supply side, but prices are determined by demand versus supply. And so did the model already break here? Who knows, right? But whenever you hear price predictions of say, Bitcoin will hit 1 million in the next five years, very often where those predictions come from is the stock to flow model. So I think it makes sense to have a look at this model, but I would not take it to the bank as any of those models for that matter. If you're interested where we currently are and what the current model price is, let's quickly zoom in. So we are currently at 36,000 and the model already predicts a price of 81,000. But yeah, when you follow this model, you're obviously very bullish, both short term and long term. Let's look at something that's not as bullish the Pi cycle top indicator. This is a very interesting indicator. It has been retrofitted to the last market cycle tops. So it basically predicted this market cycle top and this one over here. And just recently, this Pi cycle top indicator has again triggered predicting a market cycle top. And this was basically predicted. So the other market cycle tops, they were retrofitted. This here was a prediction. 
And so far this indicator has held up very well. The way this is by the way calculated is you've got two moving averages. So two times the 350 day moving average and the 111 day moving average. And so the reason why this is called the pi cycle top indicator is because when you divide 350 by 111, you get approximately pi. But yeah, it's basically just a result of a successful backtested strategy. It's kind of similar to what I sometimes do on this channel to find out what's the best moving average for a certain crypto asset. So for example, when you look at Ethereum, what moving average historically has worked the best. This pi cycle top indicator is kind of the same approach. You just look at the past very neutrally. You assume that the market structure itself will not change, that market participants will behave the same as in the future, and that when a certain indicator with a certain configuration worked well in the past, that it hopefully continues to work in the future. And so far, this played out pretty well here. So do I like this model? Yeah, I think it's not bad, but obviously there's no fundamental backing behind this. And that's always a problem. If you just know something works, but you don't really know why, or you can't explain why, the question is really how solid is your model? But I think it makes sense to look at it and at least register. If we get such a crossing, watch out, it might be relatively dangerous, especially when you consider that these kind of models might also become self-fulfilling prophecies. The Pi cycle top indicator got quite popular within the crypto community. And so just by seeing this cross and just by a lot of people noticing it and maybe taking off some chips off the table, the price might drop. And that's maybe not because those moving averages crossed, but just because a lot of people believe in it and thus the model becomes reality. Okay, so I'm sure you have seen something like this or a variation of this, a logarithmic regression line on the Bitcoin prices. So you've got the historical Bitcoin prices on a logarithmic scale. So each increment over here is a 10x. And then you've got a function that is fitted over this price data. And then on top, you've got a certain buffer. At the bottom, you've got a certain buffer. And then the price basically moves within this channel. There's many charts like this out there. For example, there's also the Bitcoin rainbow chart. I think that one looks quite nice. Here, that's the rainbow chart. Basically the same story, but it has these funny little labels there that you should sell, sell when it goes into dark orange and that it's a fire sale when it goes here into blue. It basically gives you a channel of where we currently might be in the Bitcoin macro cycle. So I would recommend in case you haven't yet to just look for Bitcoin logarithmic regression charts. Just Google this and bookmark one or two of those kind of charts and occasionally look at them because I personally think they do hold a lot of value. I think almost anybody that's in Bitcoin has seen this chart in one form or another. And so if we do fall very low on this channel, or if we get pretty high on this channel, I think these quote unquote imaginary lines will become reality. I do think that if we hit 17K, there will be people buying Bitcoin. And that's just because historically speaking, it looks now cheap because it's low on this channel. Before we go into the next chart, please don't forget to like the video so that YouTube will share the channel with a new audience and thus the channel can grow. Thank you. Now here is the first on-chain indicator, the market value realized value z-score. So this indicator takes the market cap of Bitcoin, so number of coins times the value of the coin. It subtracts something called the realized cap, that's the price of when the coins recently have been moved. And then it divides this by the standard deviation of the market cap. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what the time frame for the standard deviation here is. If you dive a bit deeper into this, you might find that out. But I think in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter that much. What this indicator is basically saying is that when a lot of coins have recently been moved, and thus many coins of this realized cap have the recent price, then we are probably in a heated phase and we probably might consider selling. If on the other hand, the price goes down and then we've got a big crash, then a lot of coins have been moved recently with this low price. And thus the ratio of this realized price versus the overall price is pretty low. 
Now I find this indicator very fascinating because it did quite well predict the market cycle tops and also relatively well predicted the bottoms. Now you might argue if this bottom over here was well predicted because probably these lines here, these green lines were plotted retrospectively. And so what looks like a relatively low value here, which might make you consider to buy actually was not that low in the grand scheme of things because what happened here with the Bitcoin price is it fell from around 7k down again to 3k. And so you think this here is relatively low, but you just went even lower and actually the real buying opportunity happened here at 3k. So you can't take this to the bank either, but I think it's good because it's the very first on-chain indicator we look at here. It's not just price data, it looks at the transactions something we can't do that easily for stocks or for commodities. It also predicted the tops pretty well and it gives a relatively nice range. So at least you can somehow gauge, I should be rather considering to buy or rather considering to sell in a certain environment. So if you hover here around six or five, it's probably a better idea to sell. And if you hover around one or zero, it's probably a good idea to buy. And so I look at this personally from time to time. I think, for example, if you dollar cost average into the market, it can give an idea of how big should be your position size. So maybe when we are in the green over here, you want to actually deploy more on your monthly payment into Bitcoin than if we say are in like the two or three score range. One last type of chart I would like to show you are the wallet balance charts. So how many Bitcoin wallets are out there with more than 1000 bitcoins or more than one bitcoin. Now I don't think those charts are really good for market timing but I still find them interesting. It's interesting what kind of data you can pull out of the bitcoin blockchain out of this public information. So for example if you look at this more than one bitcoin I would say this is probably representative of the regular retail people that maybe store their bitcoin in a cold storage. And so you see that from the top of the market cycle in 2017, the number of those addresses moved from 700,000 to 800,000 today. So you do see slightly more retail adoption of Bitcoin during that time period. It's not as quick anymore as it used to be. And you also see a slight decline when there's a real crash happening. But overall, the long-term trend is that the number of such wallets increases, which is a good thing. You see something similar for the addresses with more than 1,000 Bitcoins, but this number is a bit more volatile. It goes up and down a bit more, and that's probably just because there simply are not that many of those addresses. So, so right now we've got around 2,000 addresses that have more than 1,000 Bitcoin. Now, if you enjoy this kind of charts, feel free to have a look at this yourself. Look into bitcoin.com. I will put the link in the video description. You can have a look at all of them and you can check the details of how all of those are calculated. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. We've also got a Telegram channel in the video description down below. You're welcome to join there as well. See you next time. Bye-bye.